Welcome everyone, this is Ergo Josh, and today I'm going to share with you a little story about why I switched to the iPad Pro for nearly all of my artwork. Well, not even nearly, it's pretty much all of my artwork. Not even pretty much, it is all of my artwork for now, but I want to put switched in quotes because it's not like I have an undying loyalty to a specific brand or platform to create my artwork. And for the record, this video isn't sponsored by any company or platform, nor does it feature any paid product placements outside of my own Procreate brushes. I guess you could say I'm a little bit extra loyal to Procreate for that reason, but that's besides the point. I decided I'm going to write down a list of all the reasons why I use my iPad. Turns out there's eight, so I'm going to share them with you here today. Now, before I get started, I want to explain what you're looking at, as well as answer any technical questions that I know you're probably going to have. So first, I'm sharing with you footage of me working on my iPad Pro professionally for my next illustration. I'm working on the 12.9 inch model M2 with the second gen Apple Pencil. The iPad is also the Wi-Fi model with two terabytes of storage. I'm using my own custom Ergo Sketch, Ergo Redux, and Ergo Index brush pack for Procreate. I'm also drawing on an iPad easel that is called the Sketch Slate. The keyboard that you see me using on both sides of the screen is called the Moonlander keyboard. Now as far as apps go, again I'm mostly working in Procreate on the right side of the screen as well as switching between VisRef and the native Photos app on the left. So with that out of the way, I wanted to share a few reasons why I'm using my iPad only to paint these days, and they aren't in any particular order but I will try to emphasize which ones are especially important to me once we get to them. So the first one is the most obvious career brand image and all that, right? So back in 2018, I purchased the 2018 model of the iPad Pro, which has the very popular design that you see it still has now with the flat edges. And I posted a video review on it for artists and that video blew up and put me on the map here on YouTube. It was one of a few different videos, but that was the very first. And that kept me going. The more videos I did on iPads, even though they weren't strictly related to art, they always did well. They were always a good way for me to ground my channel and continue to stay in that YouTube partnership program so I can get that ad revenue, right? It also now, more so since I've been doing this for a while, every single time I create a new piece of artwork, every single time I share a piece of artwork and make a YouTube video, I'm growing an audience of people who also do what I do in their own way. So there's people who just use their iPad occasionally to draw, there's people who use it professionally to create artwork, images, content, whatever they do, and they watch my videos and they purchase my products and they support my artwork and everything, right? So the more I invest in that, the more I get back. So that is also something that affects how often I use it. And it's a pretty good thing that I've got going because iPads are very, very successful. They're really, really well known as Apple is a gigantic company. You know, there's like what? I don't know. There was like five billion iPhones made. So it's a pretty good place to stick in. Right. But that's only one of the rest of the reasons I have. Next is ease of use. So it is extremely easy, honestly, for my workflow to use the iPad compared to, uh, let's say, a display tablet or just a regular graphics tablet. I don't have to worry about drivers working. I don't have to worry about messing around with different cables. I just need to grab my iPad and pull my pencil off the magnetic strip and I can get to work. Whenever something crashes or if there's an issue while I'm working on my iPad, it automatically starts itself back up and I lose at most maybe three to five minutes worth of work. Rarely does that even happen anyway. Usually Procreate will just shut down and I can open it up and the last brushstroke I made will be there. So it is extremely really, it's just awesome to have that. Now, since I also use my MacBook Pro for everything that I do online, it connects to that automatically and I can transfer my work back and forth much easier than I could otherwise when I was only using my PC. 
Now, one downside is that, let's say I'm working in Photoshop or Clip Studio Paint on uh, Cintiq, for example. My artwork is already there on the computer and I can edit it in Photoshop super quick when I'm done. So it is a little bit of an extra time waste to be able to transfer things back and forth. But since I have AirDrop, it's still, it's just super minimal. It's barely any negative hit on me with my workflow. Now, let's get to the third one, which is going to be responsiveness. I use the word paint mostly to refer to everything that I create on my iPad, right? But in reality, drawing and painting are two very different practices. So personally, I draw just as much as I paint, if not more. I started out drawing traditionally. I did that for several years and then I gradually shifted to digital art as I was learning architecture in college. The iPad Pro is simply still unmatched when it comes to the responsiveness of making a mark in reality and getting that instant feedback on the screen. Now, a lot of tablet, graphics tablet producers will say, oh, it's a laminated screen, no parallax, you know, it's it feels like your drawing is really there. That's really just, you know, advertising jargon. Every single display tablet has a noticeable parallax if you put an iPad next to it. Every single display tablet has a noticeable lag time between when you make a mark and when you draw. Now, most people aren't going to notice this because it doesn't really matter when you're painting. For example, the Apple Pencil, you can get replacement nibs, right? There's one that I really like that is from Japan that has a metallic tip to it. It's a lot more precise. However, I don't like to use it to draw because it's offset from where the pointer actually is, right? And that actually confuses me. The iPad is a relatively small screen, but it's high resolution. So that offset is enough to mess me up when I'm trying to do precise drawings. Whereas if I was painting, I don't even notice it because my brush is way bigger usually, and I don't need that level of accuracy. It actually gets in the way if I'm trying to be too accurate while I paint. So for most people, I think it's the same experience where when they're painting, they don't need that kind of instantaneous precision and stuff like that. But drawing really does require a lot more precise feedback from you and the tool that you're using. And you'll probably hear me mention Wacom as I've already done it a few times again, and I'm not doing that to bash them, but I'm just doing it to compare the most mature um, advanced technology out there for graphics tablets to a completely different technology because that's what this is. It's simply always going to be more responsive, more snappy, sharper, right? The tablet screens are still way behind even the most affordable 4K screens on the market right now simply because it's just so much to pack into one device, right? But with the iPad, you can have a very nice high quality screen with mini LED glossy and still be able to draw on it with a great level of pressure sensitivity, right? So I just really, really enjoy those things and it's enough to keep me on this platform. And if you take a look on the Galaxy tablets from Samsung, those also have next to no parallax, right? So it really is just a completely different platform. It's a different technology, and that's just always going to create a gap in the experience between these types of drawing devices. Next, we have number four, and that's gonna be consistency of results, which is very, very important to me as well. This is something you may have seen Adam Duff mention in a couple of his videos since he has reviewed the Apple Studio display monitors, which I now own as well. Having a display that is a very good color calibration that's consistent and recognized across all of my devices is extremely helpful. I don't have to finagle and try to buy external color correctors and things like that. I know that Apple has a certain setting, P3 color gamut for all of its displays. I know that it can show more colors on one display over another, and it's consistent and matched as best as it can every time. 
There's a ton of iPhones out there in the world, and I can immediately check how it's going to look on my screen without having to stress about color correction and all that. So it's just a really snappy way to get consistent results so that you don't have those dreaded moments where you post something on Instagram and it looks way worse than it did or way more dull than it did while you were painting it. Because the iPad screens, especially if you get the ones with the mini LED screens, they can really, really uh, throw you when you upload it onto the computer and you see it looks so much more washed out because these screens are really getting really good now. Like you can get some really deep blacks on them and then I find that I painted everything way too dark compared to how people are actually going to view it. So in that sense, technically <laughs> you shouldn't get an iPad for this, but Procreate has a really nice feature where you can change the color gamut before you start painting and that will limit you to sRGB which is what everything online uses but I always love to paint in p3 anyway because now I'm really interested in printing my artwork and I want as many colors as I can now for number five we have procreate yeah <laughs> procreate in and of itself gets its own point here it's honestly the number one reason if i were to rate these i just love using procreate to paint it's extremely simple to use but it also has the power to handle all of my projects i've always told myself that if i couldn't get the certain look i want with a software like procreate that's super simple then it's a skill issue of mine it's not a hardware issue right because it's robust enough, it has a really, really great default library of brush sets. If I can't paint it there, then it it's a good way to force me to improve rather than to look elsewhere, because that's how I and a lot of other artists waste time in the beginning of their career when they're trying to find that one brush. Personally, I'll share you a little story here. I used to just fiend over trying to get the perfect brush settings that Stanley Lau, aka Art Germ, would use when he was doing his live streams back in the day. I was like, ah, oh, trying to just zoom in on this on the image and try to copy the brush settings, and I would be searching for that. I would be in the DeviantArt forums. That stuff is such a waste of time. <laughs> it's it serves as good memories, right? But just just get to work. That'll be the best advice anyone could give you. Now, don't get me wrong, I do frequently use Photoshop and Clip Studio Paint because the cool thing about those two apps is that they can automatically sync with the desktop version, right? And I said apps because yes, they have their own apps here on the iPad and they've both matured significantly since they were first introduced and now they're both very useful for me, Clip Studio much more than Photoshop. But Photoshop also has Fresco, which has come a long way as well, and has it's starting to rival Procreate in some ways, honestly. I'm looking forward to seeing where Fresco gets in the next year. <laughs> I say that, but then Procreate Dreams is coming out. So yeah, I can't wait to dive into that. The sixth reason is that I'm making a course for Procreate. So it's kind of the same thing, right? But it's more of a course to how to be an artist on the iPad, right? And that course is the main reason I kind of stopped painting everywhere else because I just wanted to focus on it. I wanted to really get into the iPad and how it works and learn more about it so that I can teach people, right? But it started to take a while and take longer and take longer and honestly i started to get more and more exhausted with all the crazy stuff that was happening in the past what year year and a half for me so procreate was just the solution to everything i also need the way i want to build my course is to have a lot of demonstration a lot of footage so every illustration i'm working on i'm always recording it and that allows me to have that ready as content for the course in advance so that i can get things together really really quickly and have a large library of content to pick and pull from and that brings me to the seventh reason which is content creation in general so Basically, my work, my day job is honestly documenting the process of being an artist and creating my artwork and educating people on that. And the iPad makes this extremely easy. So a little bit about editing, right? If you film something with a camera, the camera has a special chip in it that's going to compress the data into a format that still looks good, but has a small file size. But if you want to edit that, 
because the data is compressed, your computer has to struggle to decode it so that it can figure out what's in this file so that it can show you while you're editing it, right? The iPad, the way it records the screen, it compresses it, but it compresses it in such a way that a uh, software like DaVinci Resolve can still edit it buttery smooth with no lagging without me having to transcode it and make it kind of like do the work for the CPU in advance and uncompress it, right? So that saves me time and space. It's also just extremely easy to just scroll down into the control menu and hit record, right? Recording on PC, it's it's a huge pain. You've got to use OBS. The formats are really compressed or take up a ton of space. It's just really complicated. And if something happens, the file gets corrupted and you lose everything. It also slows down the computer, all kinds of stuff. Whereas on my iPad, either just the screen gets hot, there's no lagging, or honestly, this is a little bit extra, but I can plug it into my Atomos screen recorder and record my screen there and just have a great time editing afterwards. Yeah, I'll have huge file sizes, but I'll be able to have the perfect capture of the screen and the most pristine quality and edit from there and then compress it for delivery for YouTube or Patreon. Speaking of which, Patreon is going to have the entire painting process for this illustration, the screen recording itself, and they're really nice because I have used a software to remove every single frame of dead time where I'm not doing anything or I'm thinking, so it's really easy to watch, really high quality, and they're only about two to four times sped up so that you can replicate the process yourself and it doesn't seem like a blur on the screen and make you dizzy. Now for the last one, I think. Was this seven or eight? Who knows? But this one is simplicity. Simplicity is similar to the ease of use one, but I put this in its own category because of how it affects my overall lifestyle. Being able to take my work with me to events like Lightbox Expo this week and draw and share what I'm working on with people live in the moment is pretty awesome. I love being able to go into cafes and even go camping just to paint and draw on my iPad. It's super small and it's convenient and it allows me to use all of my extra brain power for creativity instead of worrying so much about all these little settings and tweaks I need to do. So at the end of the day, I'm not saying that this is a superior or inferior way to create art. It's just a tool like any other tool, right? They are tools to enable you to bring forth that amazing thing that you have to share to the world, that idea, that spark of innovation, right? And I think it's an artist's responsibility to find out what works best for them and stick to that because there's something to be said about getting really, really used to a certain product or a certain tool, right? Once you master that tool, you can use it more efficiently than anyone else who's just picking it up. It doesn't matter how long you've painted, right? A lot of people say, oh, a true artist can work with any tool. It's yeah, but it's more like there's half and half, right? A true artist has trained up their knowledge and their skill within themselves. They have trained up their own sense of their intuition, what they truly like to create, what they, how they communicate things, right? Their own motifs, their own trends. But a tool, a mastery of a tool is its own thing. Let's say Kim Jong-gi was still here, right? And he wanted to use crayons. It would still be great, fantastic piece of art. But Kim Jong-gi is put in so much more time, I'm sure, with the felt tip pen that he always uses. And that is going to always give him his best work. So yes, any great artist can make fantastic work with any tool, but a master of that tool is still going to show some advantages no matter how much the other person knows, right? So I say that for you to feel good about getting good at what you use, not to feel like you have to pick the right thing, right? You, you're going to live for, probably if you're listening to this video, you're probably going to live for at least another 20 years. That's enough time to pick up, learn, and master at least two different softwares, two different platforms, right? Three, if, you, if you're like me and you do it all the time. It, it's not something you have to worry about messing up or missing out on. 
And I honestly don't recommend you make it part of your ego to use a certain device. Like a lot of people do that. And it's honestly kind of annoying. Um, <laughs> like people are sold out to Samsung or Wacom or uh, even a computer brand. Like I'll use any of those, whichever one is the best that I like the most, I'll use it. And you know, what I said before still matters if it's pretty good. I'm not going to switch because I'm already really, really good at using Procreate and I know how the iPad works and I'm in the whole Apple walled garden. But if it's absolutely fantastic, yeah, I'd switch in a heartbeat. But like I said, it's been fantastic for me working here on the iPad Pro and ever since the new iPad OS 17 update and the upcoming release of Procreate Dreams, I don't plan to switch to something else anytime soon. And I definitely plan to go into a little bit more detail with both of those topics in the near future. So that's all from me today, guys. Let me know what you think. Let's have a let's have a full on Apple versus PC war. In the, no, no, let's not please. <laughs> I'd love to hear about what you use to create your artwork, how long you've been using it. I really want to know that. How long have you been using whatever tool you've been using? Um, and give tips and advice and maybe you can help some people find out what they should invest in or what they might want to switch to moving forward. I'm going to go ahead and let this painting continue and uh, Put on some smooth tunes to listen to and uh, you can find the finished piece coming out soon and the full recording of the process coming out in stages on Patreon. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. And if you're going to Lightbox Expo, I'll see you there. I'll be around. Take care. Bye.